Hello everyone, welcome to SPD Nordic Vision. My name is Stefan and I'm very glad to see you here again. In today's video, I'm going to talk about something very important when it comes to Scandinavian culture. That's Jenteloven, or you can say in English, loss of Jente. This is somehow considered as a rule in Scandinavian society that how the Scandinavians react, how they approach to things, how they do things, and the mentality, the society, how does it actually work. So this is something very important. If you do consider moving to Scandinavia, then learn Jenteloven. So what is actually Jenteloven? And what are those rules? So first of all, I'm gonna give you a little bit background story so it helps you to understand what exactly is Jenteloven. So Jenteloven um, firstly appeared in this novel called A Fugitive Crosses His Tracks Yeah, uh, from this Danish Norwegian author Oxa Sandemosa um, he actually in his in his novel he described this Danish town of Yanta which is kind of modeled by his own hometown that is called Nyköping Moss in Denmark and he features a life in the small towns and communities that also have these rules that everyone follows. So what are those rules? Let's look at them. So number one is you're not to think you are anything special. Number two is you're not to think you're good as we are. Number three, you're not to think you are smarter than we are. And number four, you're not to imagine yourself better than we are. Number five, you're not to think you know more than we do. And number six, you're not to think you are more important than we are. Number seven, you're not to think you are good at anything. Number eight, you're not to laugh at us. Number nine, you are not to think anyone cares about you. Number 10, you are not to think you can teach us anything. So apart from those 10 rules, there's one more that people often forget, which is perhaps you don't think we know a few things about you. So what do you think about those rules? Let me know in the comments below. I would be um, interested to know how do you feel about those rules. Um, but for me, my first time hear those rules from my Danish friends, I was not quite sure about this because it sounds so discouraging. Like you are not to think that you are better than any any one of other people. Then how? you are supposed to do something creative and to try to be better there's no way that you try to be you know to improve yourself with those rules that was my first image kind of but with the time passing by when i started to travel to scandinavia and even in the end when i started to live in scandinavia then I kind of understand a bit more how Jenteloven or loss of Jente influence the environment, the culture and the society. Here is my story. Back in 2016, it was my first time um, of visiting Sweden. So I was visiting Stockholm. I really, really love this city. It was literally um, a great experience and I feel so much connected to Stockholm. Um, one day I had a very good opportunity that my um, friend took me around. So we went a bit southern part of Stockholm. We, when we passed this sort of rich people area, as you can define, my Swedish friend told me that 
you know that in Stockholm or in Sweden people don't like to be rich I didn't really understand him so I asked him why so then he gave me an example for example if you live in this area and your neighbor uh, have recently bought a new fancy car then he would never ever want you to know he doesn't want you to know that he bought a new car and I actually didn't understand this because I just simply thought that well maybe Swedish people care too much what other people think about them that was my first kind of idea first opinion but then he told me about this Jentelov and stuff so after I moved to Norway in 2017 I have had more chance to kind of dig into the culture and understand a bit more of Jentelhoven how actually this impact the culture there um, here are some things that I wanted to point out number one um, in Norway people seldom over working, working they balance their time of work and their time um, for for themselves very well once they finish work then they do not think of uh, work they just completely enjoy their time with themselves or with their family or with their friends so overworking is really not something big in Norway again that is part of the culture of Jentelhoven because if you are overworking, then you are trying to do something special. You're trying to do something more than other people. So that is not considered so good, according to Scan, according to Jentelhoven. The second thing that I want to mention is that um, while I was working there, I felt very much like when I was working, I work as a team sort of teamwork. I never really work, you know, things alone, just try to do everything alone and try to be, you know, be a wonderful um, person, a wonderful uh, employee that I can do everything. That is not considered um, a part of a culture. Um, that is not considered good according to a uh, Jentelhoven because you are always thinking you should always think yourself as a part of the team instead of individual so this is a very very important uh, culture there in scandinavia it was not so difficult for me to adopt because as a person who grew up in asia we have some part of culture that is very very similar to that so it wasn't so hard for me but i asked some of my american friends who lived in scandinavia they was actually struggling a little bit but it took time because growing up in a culture that they have been told that they do nothing but need to sell themselves that they are the best in order to do business in the competitive uh, world but that is not the case in Norway. In Norway, not in, in Scandinavian countries, you don't really feel that much competitive sort of environment. Like when it comes to, for example, product. Because of Jentelhoven, it's not considered good to say that you are not, you are saying you are selling your product by telling people that oh my product is better than others so that's kind of not allowed based on Jentelhoven so you have to focus on the quality of the product the design of the product I guess maybe that's the reason why the Scandinavian design the Nordic design are so popular they were basically focusing on this and they have been doing so well with that and the third thing that I realized when I was living in Norway is that people are super independent. There were, um, I 
I remember when I was when I was working in Norway, I see there was a nine-year-old Norwegian boy. He can actually drive the boat and came from his town to another town to uh, do some summer work, which is absolutely mad when I first time see this because nine year old driving a boat going from one place to another place that is definitely not all the other nine year old kid can do around the world that I feel like the Norwegians are so independent the boys the, the girls the men and the women they all can do the things that um, that they have to do so no one really that much depends on the others I guess that has something to do with Yenteloven as well as it has mentioned rule number seven um, actually number nine you're not to think anyone cares about you which means you have to care about yourself you need to be independent don't try to rely on the others Okay, the next thing that I that I experienced so much while I was living in Norway was that I feel that people are actually treated that very much equally. For example, while I was working in Norway, our manager was also actually taking the shift just like us. And when he, when we need to go for a break, sometimes is my manager came over, just uh, change me so I could be able to go for my lunch break. This in some other culture is absolutely not possible. That here I feel like it doesn't matter your title, if you are a manager or supervisor, everyone is kind of doing exactly the same thing. That feeling makes you feel so good. Because, for example, my Danish friend told me that in Denmark, if you have some opinions that is not really uh, same as your uh, boss thinks, then you can actually tell your boss that you have those you know, different opinions. The relationship between the employer and the employee is kind of more um equal but in some other country you know you have to do what your employer told you to do and you should have no questions so this is a big difference that i can see and through yentelowen i can see clearly that people are treated exactly the same the next thing that i want to mention about is actually it, it has nothing to do with Norway, but Sweden. As we know that in 2015, there were like um, refugee crisis. So there's a lot of refugees from Syria. They came to Germany and Sweden. But as a matter of fact, I mean, Sweden, of course, is a very, very um, um, liberal country. So they welcomed a lot of refugees. But because of Jentelöven, here has some conflict according to the Jentelöven then all the culture are the same they should be the same so it really end up with the fact that there's a lot of uh, um, refugees in Sweden they do not learn Swedish because their culture is also treated or regarded as the same same important culture as Swedish culture so that end up with a very fun story that a lot of people who live in Sweden they do not speak Swedish or they don't really even know Swedish culture and that actually upsets some other Swedish people because they think that this is um, this is not considered a good if you live in Sweden then you need to know the culture you need to know the language but according to Jentelöven that you're not allowed to think that your culture is better than any other culture. So this is something that I also found quite interesting. The last thing that I want to mention about is that um, this has something to do with the rule number 11, 
which is perhaps you don't think we know a few things about you. The thing that I can connect the most is the safety. The safety in Nordic countries are absolutely great, and I guess maybe because of this gentleman,、um, so people are very much well behaved, because they deeply think that no matter what they're doing, the things are kind of the the things they're doing, it will be seen by the others. So the best way. For you to not have problems is to always do the right thing, and that creates such a safe and peaceful environment. That is probably also the reason why that the Nordic countries are keeping the, you know, keeping the peaceful environment for a long time. While there are a lot of other wars. That happening in other places, but not in Nordic area. So this is also something that I thought is very important to mention. Right. So these are the stories how I understand Yentlovan based on my experience through my traveling and living in Scandinavian. Countries. So, as you know, now I live in Iceland. So, some people might ask me if a、uh, gentleman also、um, applies to Iceland. Well, I can tell you that gentleman is not really applying to Iceland because you have to know that gentleman only appears in 1933. And at that time, Icelandic societies has already started to grow, so this part of the culture is not that much influencing the Icelandic society. And also,、uh, my Icelandic friend told me that、uh, in the past, when the majority of the Icelanders live in a smaller fishing town. When the fisherman brought a lot of fish to the port, then a lot of people has to come to the port and to do the fish. Even the kids from the school are encouraged by the school to come to the port and to help with the fish. So they are not really into this kind of.、Um, What we called the culture of balancing your work and the life, because when there are fish coming to the port, then you have to do it, and you probably sometimes have to work a lot of hours in order to finish all the work, with a lot of people doing it.、Mm, that is one thing that I want to mention, and also another thing, Icelandic culture, according to what my Icelandic friend said, is very much. Influenced by the American culture too, as you know, after the Second World War, during the Cold War time, the American army came to Iceland, so they somehow also brought the culture there. So in Icelandic society, Icelanders there are quite a lot of Icelanders. They're thinking about making making money and buy big house and buy big cars, and when they Have more money, they're gonna go for bigger cars and bigger house. So this kind of the bigger the better sort of culture、uh, is very much influenced by the American culture. Right now, Icelanders are still doing it. So that part I do not consider Icelandic society follows Yentlovan because while Icelandic Nordic brothers. Are trying to hide, try to be the same as others. But Icelanders, they can be a little bit overly investing things, and then they got themselves a lot of debt. So in that case, they have to work like even、uh, one or two jobs, and sometimes, it, sometimes the Icelanders are very much. Focusing on the overworking 
hours because that they can earn more money. So this overworking hours culture is very much existing here in Iceland. So this is also a big difference compared with Iceland and the、uh, other Nordic countries. But one thing that I should mention is that with the environment of the society. The younger generation in Nordic countries now, they are if they are whether or not they are still following Yentlovin, I don't know. But when it comes to it comes to the fact that now Instagram, TikTok, all these you know online social platforms are coming out, such thing like Yentlovin really don't have a chance to survive because everyone was showing off. You know the good things, the fancy cars, fancy bags, in TikTok or Instagram or fancy lifestyle in order to get more followers. So, you know, I don't really know that if Yentlovin can still pass through the younger generation. In the end, I would like to give you some suggestions if you are moving to Scandinavia regarding Yentlovin. You need to try as much as you can to learn these sort of culture and try to adjust them and let them become a part of your culture. As I mentioned, here in Scandinavian countries, personal bragging is really, really not a big thing, and people will feel like you're a very annoying person. So just try to be humble. Try to focus on what you actually need to do, and try to think yourself as a part of the team instead of, of instead of an individual. I know we all like Hollywood movies. We all like to see that the heroes saving people from the devil, but here is not Hollywood. Here is Nordic countries. Is Scandinavia. Here people follow another different rule. So. While you complain how difficult to make friends in Scandinavia, you should also need to learn and go a bit deeper to understand the Scandinavian culture. If there actually anything that you can improve, so in that case, the Scandinavians like you a bit more. We all know,、um, through my personal experience. Scandinavians are very much kind of closed in the beginning. They, before they know you, they would rather to hear other people accept you as a valuable person. Then they started to open slowly and so slowly, slowly. But you cannot tell them directly. You are a valuable person. These things must be. Told by other people, so remember that. Then you are already on your way. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up and share this video to people that who you think they might be interested. We all know that learning a new culture is very very difficult thing. That's why I'm here and try to help you as much as I can. And let me know in the comments below what you actually want me to talk about when it comes to the Nordic culture. So I would be more than happy to know what you are interested in. Okay, enough for today, and see you next time. Bye.